Hey, what's up, everybody? We are live August 31st, right? Yeah, August 31st. Hope it's going good for everybody out there. We finally got uh, this whole YouTube community thing figured out, so figured we'd try to uh, schedule something this time as opposed to me just jumping on. We'll see if anybody can get on board with us here, but hope everybody's having a good day. I'm having a good day. Life's good. How's it going, Alex, Derek? Isaiah, or Isaiah, sorry, not sure if I said it right. Bass Addict, what's up? Chase, Robert, what's happening, everybody? How's everybody doing today? Hey, what's up, MBRP? I was up there yesterday. MBRP make the best exhausts. They were hooking me up with some tires because they have another business where they do performance parts for uh, cars and trucks, but uh, I was up there yesterday. Hey, what's up, Mr. JK? Hey, man. <laughs> Thank you again. You're like our biggest supporter. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yeah, we're. Uh, I just thought I'd schedule a little talk today, see how everybody's doing, see what's going on. We got our new Grizzly behind us right here. This is the uh, 2019 Grizzly SE 700. I'm actually pretty impressed with this, with this uh, ATV. I'm really excited about the fact that Yamaha did something really cool with uh, with the tire and wheel package on this thing. I'll give this a little tilt so you guys can see here. But um, sorry, it's kind of hard to see. I'll move out of the way if I can. <coughs> I'll lean back. No. Anyways, it's a square tire setup on the new Grizzly, which I'm really excited about. So they're running 10-inch uh, wide Zillas on the front as well as the back. So you're completely square setup, which is really cool. Plus 14-inch rims. And it's hard to see from the picture right here, but um can i point it out kind of the little gray areas you're seeing right there sorry for my big finger in the way but it's like a it's almost a gunmetal gray color really really nice so anyways 14 inch rims 27 inch tires from the factory which is pretty cool there's not too many people who are doing that unless it's a full mud runner so anyways i'm excited about it uh i get to go test this thing over the next couple of days and uh, beat on it a little bit and see how it handles. So I'm, I'm excited about this. Plus the color, the blue color on it is insane. Like one of the nicest ones I've ever seen. So anyways, hope you guys enjoy it. We're gonna do a little bit of a build up on it too with some cool genuine Yamaha um, factory integrated parts. So I'm excited to do that also. And we're gonna take this thing out and put it in the mud and see how it goes. Cause with tires like that and kind of a focus on mud, it's gonna be sweet. Hey, Bass Attic, thank you, man. Really appreciate it. Thanks for, uh, for watching our stuff again. I know I kind of say this every single time, but I only get to do what I do because you guys watch us. So I really appreciate you tuning in, checking us out, coming to the live feed. Um, yeah, and today actually I want to take a little bit of time to ask you guys, because um, I'm watching, I am watching all the comments and I apologize if I'm not answering them specifically, but um, uh, I want to come up with the next idea for maybe just a YouTube specific, it's not on the television show, it's just for you guys on YouTube. And my idea is to take a late, uh, teen 20 teen so like a 2014 um grizzly and i would like to either take the 700 out of it and put in some kind of a v-twin i'm not sure what v-twin yet in my mind i'm kind of partial to the can-ams because i can get them really easy um but either put in like a can-am 800 v-twin or take a 700 grizzly and overboard to like an 815 kit with a, a good uh, forged piston and then put nitrous to it um i know it sounds a little crazy but I think one of those things would be really cool. So I'd like to ask you guys what you what you think would be cool. Do I think Yamaha will put a new twin cylinder engine in the Grizzly? That's what we would love to see. But if they don't, I would like to do it with an older Grizzly. I, I can't cut up a brand new one. I just, I, it's, yeah, it'd hurt my heart too much to do that. <laughs> but I'd like to ask you guys what you think of of the next project or what we should do for the next project. And it may just be a YouTube specific one. So um I don't know. Uh, I'm going to read through some of the comments on the side. Let me know what you think and what you think would be uh, kind of a cool, cool setup for doing something like that. Obviously, if we went to a Can-Am motor, it'd be Can-Am clutching. Um, we'd probably have to put Can-Am differentials in it, uh, the Can-Am transmission. It'd have to be pretty much an entire Can-Am motor and drivetrain package with Yamaha on the outside. So I'm a little less excited to do that because it's kind of like just using the, the, uh, the Grizzly frame. But I am a little more excited about trying to do something like an 815 big bore kit on a uh, Yamaha and see what would come from it. Overboard the Grizzly. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the right one. I think I'm with you on that. I think it'd be cool. Build a Honda. 
you know what? I'm less excited about building a Honda because there's not all that many people out there who are crazy about going huge performance um, with like a Rincon 680. Um, I just don't love the chassis. Uh, I don't love the ATV itself. Um, it's not bad. It's just, I think the Grizzly's got a lot more potential. And when we built the WR700, it was pretty sweet. <laughs> we have Z3 cylinder engine. Yeah. <laughs> and don't build a Can-Am with plastic. I, I hear you, Sam. I'm, I'm kind of I'm with you on that one. How about a new Yamaha 850? I would love that, Harley. That would be super cool. Do I like Can-Am over Yamaha? You know what? I like both of them. Um, they're very different. Can-Am is always cutting edge when it comes to horsepower, performance, um, and suspension. Yamaha is always super high reliability, and they make sure that their product is, is really durable. So uh, I'm not saying Can-Ams aren't durable, and I'm not saying Yamahas don't have performance, but I think those two companies kind of look at different areas uh, of the market when it comes to ATVs. So I don't pick one over the other. It just depends on what I do. Oh, what else we got here? I hope Rincon comes out with a, oh, you hope Honda comes out with a new Rincon. Yes, we do too. We would love to see a V-twin Rincon. I think that would be super cool and it's about time for it. Big bore stroker combo. There you go. I like that. Mr. JK, man, you're a maniac. I love it. Thank you. That's, <laughs> that's cool. Thank you. I, I think it'll be a good idea too. And um, your input would be, uh, would be greatly appreciated. Thank you for supporting the page. Um, and uh, I don't mean to uh, jump onto people who are paying for comments, but um, it's on there because, uh, hey, we, we do what we do. And uh, if you guys, you know, watching us on here and supporting with, um, with paid comments really helps out. So thank you very much. We appreciate it. And uh, it, uh, yeah, we'd love to answer comments for everybody and, and especially for people who are, uh, who are putting that up there. So thank you, Mr. JK. I appreciate it, man. Top Mud ATV Shootout. Yeah, good call. We're trying to, we're trying to organize all of the, um, you know, the, the mud specific vehicles from all the manufacturers, it's just really hard to get them here all at the same time. And I have to keep in mind too, that the manufacturers have certain products that they want us to test for them. So they say, Hey, here's our, our plans for the season. Uh, what are your plans for the season? And then we try to make those work together the best we can. And sometimes it's hard to get all mud specific vehicles because they may be focusing on some others, but I do agree. That would be a really fun shootout to do. <coughs> JL Elka shocks. Yes, they're great. Uh, I'm, I'm a fan of Elka shocks. Last time I overboard a Yamaha, I had to get ACL replacement. Sorry, it just jumped down after a dirt bike. <laughs> Don. Well, hopefully we won't have to do that, but I don't have much, knee, much of a knee left anyways. I, I had my kneecap replaced or removed a while back, and uh, yeah, my knee's all scarred up and pulled apart and ripped apart. So maybe we'll have to get an ACL done too. Luke's had all that done though. Uh, what do I have against the Honda Foreman? <laughs> I don't really have anything against the Honda Foreman. It's just not necessarily the most exciting AV for me. Um, if I had to pick something, it probably wouldn't be the Foreman. But if I wanted an ATV that's going to be around longer than dirt, well, I'd probably buy a Foreman because that's what they are. They're just not as exciting to me right now. I think Honda has a lot to do in the R&D department, and they really need to push stuff forwards in a quick pace because uh, everybody else is sort of uh, moving forwards at a faster rate right now. The Talon, sure, the Talon could be great. Um, I just hope it doesn't come out with a 90 horsepower motor because I don't think that's going to excite people who are buying 170 horsepower turbos. So I know I'm going to get beat up on for saying that, but it's just, the, it's just the truth. How much does the 2019 Yamaha Grizzly 700 cost? You know what? I'm not going to say that because I don't know right now and I don't want to pull up the website and uh, make you guys wait while I'm here, but just pull up um, either yamahamotor.ca, I think it is, or yamahamotor.com. And uh, they give you the, the, you know, estimated retail prices right on the website. So check that out. You can go through all the different levels. This is the most primo, cool, everything on it. It's got power steering. It's got the uh, uh, the new gauge package and the LED headlights, the LED tail lights, 14 inch rims, 27 inch tires, all that cool stuff. Elka's the bomb. You are right. Mr. JK. Hey man, got to do some stuff. See you later. Hey, thanks. Thank you very much for stopping in and, uh, and spending your hard earned money with us. We appreciate it, man. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And thank you for being here for almost all of my, uh, my live chats. This is cool. I really appreciate it. So, uh, take it easy and have a good day, man. Really appreciate you stopping by. A Foreman 500 is a good four wheeler for a regular person. Sure it is. Yeah. I mean, every four wheeler is a good four wheeler for a regular person. I'm just not a, a huge fan of it. If I want to go out and drive relatively fast on the trail um, or go in the mud or um, get the front wheels off the ground or
do a wheelie or anything like that. And again, I'm not bashing Honda. I'm just saying that some of their stuff is a little, little long in the tooth, uh, needs a bit of a haircut and, and a bit of an update. So, and I don't think anybody's going to argue that Honda doesn't need some updates right now. I mean, they really do. So we'll, uh, we'll see. Uh, I just bought a Honda form and I love it. It's even the color I love. Well, that's great. That's good. And those who like Hondas love Hondas. I mean, one of the guys who, uh, who does, uh, some of our filming and, uh, and editing, uh, Graham loves his Honda. He's a Honda guy. Um, but I mean, even he, even he comes back and says that it's, uh, it's definitely in time or time for a, uh, for an update. And, and I think overall with the, uh, Japanese manufacturers, I think it's time for a twin in a, in an ATV. Um, I know that there's the, uh, the brute force 750, but it's been roughly the same motor for a long time. Everybody knows that. And I think it's time for somebody else to come out. And I think Yamaha would do a stellar job with that because Yamaha is a motor company. Check out the Nikola NTZ. Yeah, I know. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Pretty crazy. I'd love to get my hands on one of those and squeeze the trigger. That thing looks crazy. It's got like something insane, like over 400 horsepower at the rear wheels because obviously electric builds huge horsepower really quick. And yeah, that'd be fun. <coughs> Kawasaki for their sport bikes. They do make really really cool sport bikes if you're talking about on-road motorcycles definitely for sure grizzly two up another great question that would be a cool one as well and i think if they came with a v-twin they would probably come with a two-up platform as well renegade 850 versus scrambler 850 shootout <laughs> i hear you i hear you we, we should do that as well as a mud shootout those are two that would be really really big <laughs> uh what do we got my opinions on the old kawasaki prairie 650s you know what they're a they're a good atv for lasting and uh reliability i mean it might not be all of the excitement of the new bells and whistles but you're probably not going to pay much for it either so great atv to start off on and to get you uh you know interested in the sport and if you're out um you know just looking for something to, to use around the house or pull a trailer with do firewood you know all that kind of stuff yeah it's it's going to be there for a long time there's a lot of older ATVs that are great, just like our um, uh, our Articat uh, 500 that we did the story on this year. Great little ATV, paid 2,500 bucks for it. Legit, that's Canadian too. So what's that in American dollars? Like, uh, you know, about 38 bucks. Um, so it's it's not uh, not very much to get into the sport. So definitely, I have a, an 06 Cowie Prairie 360 with 4,000 miles for sure. Yeah, you know what? There's a lot of a lot of those Japanese ATVs will be around for a long time, rock solid. Um, and again, I'm not bashing anyone. Yamaha is doing some really cool stuff. They're really, really jumping forwards. Um, we had the uh, Suzuki uh, King Quad here, and I did the test on it just uh, a week ago. Um, we have a Terex 4 here right now, and Luke just finished the test on that a couple days ago. So all kinds of stuff uh, out there for sure from from those manufacturers but i think yamaha is the one who's really stepping forwards really progressing and pushing the industry hard right now so i'm excited to see what uh what they have coming next because they've always got something cool up their sleeve what is snow track snow tracks is our uh winter show so we do snowmobiles um both mountain riding trail riding we do some snow bike stuff all kinds of anything related to snowmobile um and winter that's that's where we are all winter long so um, we don't completely get out of dirt tracks and I'm going to be doing live feeds all through the winter for dirt tracks as well. But in the winter time where we are, it's uh, covered in six foot and play on, uh, on the track vehicles and have some fun. So that's what snow tracks is. You can check it out. Uh, snow tracks TV, look it up on YouTube as well. And we do all kinds of cool winter stuff there. It's uh, all the same guys, all the same crew, uh, myself, my brother, my dad. Um, yeah. So check that out. If you have some time, it might give you some new stuff to, uh, to take a look at on here. Sorry, guys, I'll get back to some questions. Do you like the Polaris Sportsman 450HO? Yeah, definitely. G-Man Gaming, it's a really, really good ATV. Um, price point is perfect. I mean, where are you going to get a better ATV for that kind of price, right? And, uh, and really, really fun, reliable, good suspension. It's nice. <laughs> Chase, you got a few thumbs up in there, man. Do I think that Kawasaki should make the Brute Force 300 into a 4x4? Yes, I was with my buddy Blaine yesterday. He's at a dealership up in Halliburton County, and I was talking to him, and he said, man, look at this thing. It, it looks great, um, really nice ATV, great price point. said, I can't sell them because it's not four-wheel drive. And I looked at it, and I went, wow, it looks, you know, like a, like a brute force, just a little bit shrunk down. And I was shocked that it wasn't four-wheel drive. So, yeah, I definitely think they should make a four-wheel drive. Remember the Hawkeye from uh, – it was the Hawkeye from Polaris, right, that they made that was four-wheel drive, I'm pretty certain. And that was – in my opinion, for a for an entry level rider, or maybe um, you know, like a 
Uh, I have to say this uh, PC for a 16 year old rider um, and no one younger than that, it would fit perfectly, right? The Hawkeye and it had four wheel drive, really cool. So yeah, I definitely think somebody should make that mid mid size four wheel drive again, because uh, there's a lot of kids who are running around on sport quads or two wheel drive stuff, or they're running their parents way bigger bikes than they shouldn't be. So I think there's, there's definitely a market there for a mid size, like 250, 300 four wheel drive. I think that'd be pretty cool. Could you see Polaris building a 570 scrambler? Yeah, why not? I mean, that would be cool for sure. I like that thought, Dustin. That's a, that's a good one. Cause the 570 motor is great, right? Like, I don't know anybody who said, Hey, my 570 sucks. Cause they don't, they're really good. They overperform and really nice motor. And I think a, a smaller scrambler would be cool. <clears throat> How's the stock suspension on the Grizzly? This, you know what, this doesn't have upgraded suspension. Um, I think that could be one area that Yamaha could propel a little bit more forwards too, is maybe using some of those, uh, those nice shock packages they put on their side-by-sides. I'm not saying YXZ stuff, uh, you know, you don't have to go that far, but just some of their nice piggyback shocks on, on the SE was really cool. However, that's going to push the retail price up again too. So it runs nice the way it is. Um, very compliant. We're running it, I think almost all the way soft right now, and it still feels great and works really good. So I'm not complaining, uh, but I think it would be, would be nice to see, um, uh, uh, you know, an SE, x package with uh with piggybacks that you could you could buy for sure especially with this cool wheel and tire package it would be it'd be a really nice fit what do i think of the kodiak 700 it's a great atv i mean honestly there's nothing wrong with the kodiak um yamaha sent us the grizzly to test though we did the kodiak test ride i believe last season so you can check that out too if you want to see our opinion on that for sure there's a test ride on the youtube page so check that out i uh, love the channel complex legend what would you recommend thanks for watching man uh, what would you recommend doing to a 2016 Can-Am Renegade 570? Well, that's a good question. The Renegade 570 comes pretty well equipped. Um, I'm not sure what I'd tell you to do to that. Put a bigger motor in it? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's a great, it's a great ATV on its own. Um, wheels and tires on it are actually really nice from stock, but I think an upgraded wheel and tire package on that is, is nice. Um, I mean, if you like it the way it is, you didn't buy it because you wanted the primo uh, horsepower because there's the, you know, the 650, the 850 and the thousand. Um, so you bought it because you like the 570 power and you're good with that. So I wouldn't say to do a performance upgrade on it because you bought a 570. So it's probably, you know, all that you want and that's good. Um, but wheels and tires are the next big one. Uh, putting a, a winch on it for sure. Um, that would probably be the next upgrade that I would look at. Um, I can't remember. I think the 570 comes with a basic shock package. So you could also look into something like an Elka stage one or stage two shock package for it. That would really change things. Just joining. Are you expecting a new commander anytime soon? Yeah, actually we are. I think a new commander is coming either this season or next. Um, maybe not this season, but definitely I think it should be in the very near future. And I think it's going to be a competitor for the general. I think they're going to they're going to match that up to the general and build something that's um, that's in that category. I think that's where it'll fall into place. And, and I can't wait for it because I think a, uh, a general competitor in that, that kind of size shape and horsepower will be really cool. And then we'll do a shootout. Sorry. How about a Japanese big bore shootout? We should do that. The problem is if you want to go Japanese and single cylinder, because really it's not fair to, compare the brute force against the other Japanese manufacturers. V-Twin, the single cylinder is very different power delivery. Um, we're pretty much just Rincon 680, uh, the 700 King Quad and the 700 Grizzly. Um, we could definitely do that. It's just tough for us to get all three of those vehicles. We have the King Quad here right now and the Grizzly. And uh, so we could do a little bit of a shootout with those two, but we just can't seem to get ourselves uh, a 680 Rincon right now. Um, We've requested and asked for it, and um, yeah, no delivery. So what do you do? But we will. We'll we'll talk about doing that in the future for sure because I think there's definitely merit to that. Did I like the Maverick Trail 1000? Yes, loved it. Have one right now. It's really really good. Very fun. Um, size is perfect. Fit and finish is excellent. Interior is way better than anything else in that category. Honestly, the interior is just great. Um, I love the looks of it. I love the way it works. It's really, really good. Our story last season of the Maverick 1000 trail versus the, <coughs> excuse me, uh, 900 Razor, I don't know if it was base model or what it was, but anyways, we did a story between those two. Luke and I took them back to back and 
have a look at that if you haven't on uh, on YouTube yet. It was a it was a good little shootout story. So that's I think maybe one of the last episodes from last season. But you'll find that uh, on on our YouTube page, and that was genuinely an honest story. I mean, there wasn't any BS in that. It was it it happened the way that it happened. So sorry guys, I'll script down here a little bit and try to get into some more comments. Uh, what do we got? Razor High Lifter review. We are oh sorry, Razor High Lifter. We may not be doing a Razor High Lifter. Um, but we will possibly be doing a uh, sportsman high lifter review before the end of the season. So we're trying to, uh, trying to get that going right now. Grizzly or brute force, my opinion, I would go with the Grizzly. I am a fan of the way that they're updating this. The brute force hasn't seen a whole ton of updates for a while. So um, I know there have been some small updates for sure, but it's not seeing the kind of revamp that this has. So in my opinion, the Grizzly is the one that they're really progressing forwards on. And honestly, the Grizzly SC, I know it's sitting behind me. Yeah, Yamaha is a sponsor of our show, but I'm not forced to say anything good or bad about them. But I really like this Grizzly. I think this is the, the best Grizzly they've ever built. I like running in the mud. I like playing in the mud. You guys know that from the uh, from the project build that I've done. And this thing here, this is Yamaha's first real foray into something very different. I mean, square tire setup, 27-inch tires, 27-inch mud tires. To me, that says a whole lot about what they're doing right now. This thing's got almost 12 inches of ground clearance. Like, how cool is that? That's really solid. Plus, in the rear, it's got 9.1 inches of travel, I believe. And I think up front, it's 7.6, if I remember correctly. Um, that's pretty solid. Like, they're doing a really good job with a vehicle that, yeah, it doesn't compete against the 850s because it's a single-cylinder 700. So that's not where it's at. But, I mean, if you put this thing head-to-head -head against a fully loaded 570 um, from anybody else, um, you know, well, obviously, it's not really the same category either. But I would run this against maybe... Maybe the 650 V twin from uh, from Can Am. I think probably that's a similar similar. I think the 650 still probably got a little more horsepower for sure. But uh, th this bike ATV, sorry, bike. I shouldn't say that is really really good. I'm I'm a big fan of it right now. What's my first ATV? Uh, I think it was a Polaris. Oh, sorry, it was a Suzuki LT80 was my first ATV. Then we broke the frame in half on that because uh, we rode the wheels off of it. Um, before that, it was a Trizinger, uh, the little 50, uh, 50 cc Suzuki three wheeler. Um, and I know you can't say three wheeler anymore; they're a bad word. But uh, we had those for sure. We had lots of three wheelers. Then uh, I went to the LT80. We broke the frame in half on that. And then I think my dad bought me, and that's Mark. Uh, it was it was a Polaris. I can't remember what's bigger. The Trail Bla Trail Blazer, I think, was the first one. Was that a, a two fifty two stroke? And then the Trail Boss came after that. And then after the Trail Boss, I went back to uh, dirt bikes for a little bit. Kawasaki KDX 200, then a KDX 2, no, sorry, RT 180, Yamaha RT 180. Then a, uh, hey, Kyle, Kyler, thank you, man. Appreciate that. Thanks for uh, sponsoring the, the talk here. We appreciate it. And thanks for tuning in. Um, so I went off of those two Polarises. Then I came back to, um, uh, to a Yamaha RT 180 dirt bike with a steel gas tank. Fell off it my first day, got upset, kicked the gas tank and dented it. My dad just lost his mind on me because it was brand new, rightly so. Now I have children. Then we went to KDX 200, KDX 220, uh, a RM 125, and I went to a YZ 426, and that was a bad move because I was way too small for it and needed a milk crate. And then back on to ATVs, a uh, Honda um, EX 400, and then from there it went up Raptors and uh 450s and all kinds of stuff so anyway sorry i gave you the the whole rundown of my my uh, atv and dirt bike history there but uh yeah there you go um do i own an atv that i review no i don't i don't own the atvs that we review chase we uh we just get to use them from the manufacturers not not totally true some of them we do own we own the mud build um, and a few others but for the most part we just get to use them so no we don't own them sorry guys these are moving quick lt80s or wheelie machines darn right they are and they're fun <laughs> We have wheelie competitions at my brother-in-law's sometimes. It's pretty fun. He's got two of them. Uh, okay, what's my thoughts on the Honda Pioneer 1005 EPS? It's actually a good side-by-side, -side, you know, and the, the convertible seat thing, I think there's merit to it. Um, people who have them seem to love them. Uh, I think the Pioneer is much better looking than the Big Red, so I do like that. Um, yeah, anyways, this is, uh, yeah, that's kind of my thoughts on that. Uh, will they upgrade the Sportsman 570? I don't know. I think it's been upgraded kind of recently. It's uh, it's pretty good ATV on its own, so I'm not sure if they will. What would be a good performance upgrade for a Sportsman 570? 
you know, when it comes to performance engine wise, there's not a ton that you're going to do to that besides a clutch kit. A clutch kit will give you good performance, but really don't hack into that motor. You're probably going to find more problems than you are fixes if you try to do that because it's a very strong little 570. Um, and I just don't think there's much merit to putting on, you know, a fuel programmer and an exhaust and doing that kind of stuff. For the money you're going to spend, you could probably trade the bike in and get yourself an 850. Um, you know, because a good pipe and a fuel programmer, you're probably into like 1500 to 2000 bucks if you spend good money on, uh, on, you know, a full, full exhaust system and a really good programmer. Um, sorry, I'm talking Canadian dollars, so I apologize, but you know what, I, you get what I'm saying. So probably your best bet is to go with a clutch kit and then some wheels and tires. You're going to change the way it looks, change the way you feel about it. Um, I don't know. I fall back in love with trucks and ATVs and side-by-sides when I put new wheels and tires back on them, it can completely change the look of a vehicle. So I apologize. I'm going to skip down just a little bit because this thing's rolling along here. Uh, let's say then got married, had children, got rid of wife. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't uh, read the ones up above Don, but you got me peaked now. I want to see what, it, uh, my first was a skidoo Mach one. I got to read through this. Then got married, had children, got rid of wife. <laughs> oh man. That's funny. <laughs> um, where can I get a four wheeler like yours? Like this one, any Yamaha dealer, they will sell them to you. Uh, I think they hit dealer showrooms in June. So anywhere you want, man, any Yamaha dealer, they'll hook you up. And, uh, and don't think just because I'm talking SE, I'm telling everybody they got to go buy the most premium, buy the vehicle, buy, buy the truck, buy the ATV, buy the side-by-side, -side, buy the snowmobile that fits your budget, because that's the right way to go. Don't, don't go out and, you know, buy it strictly off of a, you know, how much can I afford to the absolute maximum, buy something that you look at, you go, Hey, maybe I can fix this thing up a little bit. Maybe I can flip it. Maybe I can make some money, um, buy something that fits your budget because then you're going to enjoy riding it more. You're going to have more money for gas and going on trips to like Hatfield McCoy or you know, any of these cool places that we go and go do the same thing and you're not going to be completely stressed. And the truth is I can ride a 570 just about as fast and keep up with almost anybody on an 850 or a thousand. It's all about how you ride the thing. You know, it's, it's not uh, the biggest horsepower doesn't mean that you're the best person or the best rider. So just buy something that fits in your budget and enjoy it and ride the wheels off the thing. Heck, if you're a new rider, go buy something that's used with a, you know, 5,000 miles on it and beat the thing down. And then Figure out what you like, what you don't like, you know, maybe get a ride on some of your buddy's stuff. And from there, yeah, upgrade or or trade it in and buy something else. There's always a good market for used ATVs. No problem, Kyler. Thanks for watching, man. I appreciate that you like our videos. And uh, hey, again, I know I keep saying this, but I'm going to keep saying it because it's true. You, we get to do what we do because you guys watch us. So thanks very much for tuning in and watching our videos. Really appreciate it. Uh, and that comes from Luke and myself and Mark and the whole crew here. We all really appreciate it. Any trails near, near New Jersey you know about? I don't. Um, maybe somebody on here can comment to that. If uh, Maybe somebody can help Jake Vincent out here. Um, yeah, I, I don't know anywhere around New Jersey, so I apologize. Uh, but somebody might be able to help you out here. What do I like better, ATVs or UFCs? What's UFCs? Or do you mean side-by-sides? Did that just uh, autocorrect? I apologize. I'm not sure what that is. Type it down there. Oh, UTVs. Sorry, UTVs. There we go. I apologize. Uh, you know what? Right now in my life, I'm a fan of, I guess it depends on what day it is. If I need to go out and blow off some steam, then I can do that on an ATV um, and feel real good about it and typically not come back with any, you know, torn up beads or, uh, or uh, ripped sidewalls or dented rims. When I get on side-by-sides, our trails here um, right close to the office are a little bit tighter. So you got to watch out. And we got a lot of rock here in Ontario. We're on the Canadian Shield. So uh, yeah, it's the uh, the hardest place on earth on tires. Um, so I, I think if I want to go out with the family, obviously the best thing for us is a side by side. It works really good. I like having the kids with me and the wife. Um, but if I need to go out after work and just, you know, hold it wide open and go rip down a trail and blow off some steam, like I said, then yeah, there's not much like an ATV. And that's why the new, uh, the new RS one that we have, Luke's actually out testing it right now. Um, that's why the RS one is pretty cool because it's kind of the best of both worlds. So I, I've enjoyed the, uh, the RS one and that kind of new, um, I don't know what you want to call it, like new segment of the market, I guess. I don't know. It's, it's not an ACE. It's way better than ACE. Um, and actually that's the story we're thinking about doing is maybe showing you guys the comparison between an ACE 900 and an RS one. Cause a lot of people said, oh, well, it's just the next generation of the ACE. Why don't they call it an ACE RS one? Um, but it's not, it's built off the, uh, built off the Razor, uh, XP 1000 platform. And the, uh, the ACE obviously is built off the sportsman chassis. So quite a bit different. What CC is my four wheeler? This one here is a 700. Um, you can get the Grizzly though in the 
550, right? Everybody correct me there. I'm pretty sure it's 550 Grizzly. And then if you go to Kodiak, is Kodiak still 450 or can you go 550 and 700 in the Kodiak as well? Somebody correct me here. I don't want to pull up the uh, the internet and, and waste your time searching through that, but uh, I, you can get this in a, in a 550. I actually, sorry, I apologize. I'm not sure if you can get the SE with these wheels and tires, sorry, these wheels and tires um, in the 550 or not. I'm not hundred percent sure. So, but check on Yamaha's website. They'll definitely help you out there. Uh, you should come to Tug Hill, New York to ride ATVs or sleds. We've been there and ridden sleds for sure. Definitely been there. But yeah, we haven't ridden ATVs. <coughs> Sorry, I'm going to take a drink. <coughs> I think overbore and nitrous on the Grizzly, Grizzly would be nice. I think so too. Anybody who's just joining us or who didn't hear about what we're planning on doing, 450 and 700 Kodiak, Grizzly 700 only. Oh, are they only 700 now? Okay, cool. Um, so what we're what we're looking at doing is I'd like to start a project that maybe goes through a you know starts the end of the summer into the fall and goes through the winter time and do it just for you guys on YouTube not for not for the TV but just for you guys so we can do whatever the heck we want and my idea is um we'd like to get a grizzly I can't hack up a brand new one I just can't do that nor do I want to spend the money on a brand new one and then tear it apart because it's too nice but we want to get ourselves um a late model grizzly maybe like 2014ish something that possibly has a blown motor in it. And then what we're thinking about doing is either, either doing a big bore kit on it, like a big overbore, go to like 815. I think that's about as big as you can go with those ones uh, safely. Um, make sure we get a forged piston in it and then dump some nitrous to it. And the other option would be to try to fit a V-twin in. But the only problem is after we sat down and thought about it, we'd really have to put almost, um, almost an entire uh, driveline uh, assembly from whatever the V-twin motor is because you know, like if we put a Can-Am in, well, we're probably going to have to work with a Can-Am front, front differential. The rear diff, I'd probably want to upgrade because I'm not sure if this uh, Grizzly 700 diff will take the power of a, you know, an 800 or 850. Um, and, and then we don't have to, you know, mess around with drive shafts and all that stuff, rebuilding them and getting them custom made and whatnot. We may have to stretch the chassis and do those things. And then I feel like we're getting a long ways away from, from what the Grizzly is. So an overbore is what I'm thinking might be really cool, going to an 815 and putting some nitrous to it or something cool like that. So um, if anybody has any thoughts on that, I'm reading through everything here. So I'd, I'd like to, uh, like to do something with that. <clears throat> okay. I saw a question here. I wanted to answer. Let me just scroll through it. How do I feel about the new Ranger 2019 1000 XP? Honestly, I'm a huge fan of the Can-Am Defender and the Can-Am Defender was definitely better than the previous Ranger, um, in almost every way. Really, really good. Uh, I'll call it a rec utility uh, side by side because you can definitely go out and trail ride it. I think the new Ranger 2019, um, the 1000 XP Ranger, is every bit as good. And I'm interested to do a head to head shootout. We're hoping that we can get a uh, Defender up here and we might do that shootout just for you guys on YouTube uh, because I don't think we have spot on the TV show before the end of the season. But the new one is great. We just picked up our 1000. It's uh, just in the storage building right behind me. So we have the 1000 uh, Ranger here. and. I'm really excited to test that. So I, I like it a lot. It's a great side-by-side, -side, um, huge utility purposes. Great, great vehicle. And it's fun on the trail still. Sorry, I'm going back up. 2002 Suzuki Ozark, Trail Runner 250. And I beat the thing and it still runs like new. There you go, man. And you probably have a blast on it, right? You probably didn't spend a ton on it. Or now it's, you know, if you amortize it over the past however long you've owned the thing, you probably didn't put that much into it, really. And it's still going. That's cool. Uh, sorry, it skipped down on me here. Let's see. Turbo build the Grizzly. Turbo, yeah, there we go. We could try to turbo a 700. I'd, no, I'd take it out to 815 and then I'd turbo it. Um, might as well get as much as we can. Have I ever ridden the Arctic Cat T660 turbo? Yeah, for sure. You're talking about the snowmobile, obviously. Um, we've definitely ridden those. Uh, I remember that sled ripping down the lake wide open for like a five minute wide open pull and then stopping and lifting the hood up on it. And the turbo housing was glowing red. Um, it actually worked really good for a 660. That thing overperformed big time. That'd be a cool motor to put in an ATV, but definitely too big and made a lot of heat. So, uh, do I think the Kawasaki Brute Force is better than the Grizzly? I do not. I don't think it is. Um, I, I'd be a, I'd pick a Grizzly. They've updated it more. It's got more suspension. Um, it's a nicer overall uh, ATV. Uh, that's, I'm a fan of it. I say instead of the Grizzly, maybe an older Honda Foreman. Yeah. I, I know we everybody's been saying test the do the old school uh, test ride on the Honda Foreman 300. Uh, I think it's Honda Foreman 300. Maybe it was Rancher 300. I'm sorry, I can't remember. But uh, 
I want to do a build on something that's got more potential. And I think that the Grizzly would have more potential for making it really cool. But yeah, I like Brandon. Uh, I like your suggestion of turbo in it. That would be fun too. Long live Honda. <laughs> would Maverick Trail 1000 DPS be good for recently disabled Renegade ATV rider? I would think so. Yeah, the power steering is going to help you big time for sure. Um, getting in and out, obviously, maybe maybe something a little more utility purpose might be easier to get in and out of. I don't know. You'd have to you'd have to look at that, but um, definitely would be easier for sure. Give me two seconds. My dog is scratching the door down. You might be able to hear that, so I'm going to let him in because he follows me everywhere. And and uh, so give me two seconds. I'm coming right back. I promise. Sorry, my dog follows me everywhere. He's an old man. So yeah, <laughs> I'll go back to the questions now. <clears throat> sea Dog Outdoors, do I remember you from the other live streams? Yeah, man, thanks for tuning in. Ever consider reviewing viewers quads on this channel? You know what, okay, so here's another storyline that we have that, that we, we've been roughing out the idea for, uh, maybe for next season, is talking to people who've done crazy stuff with their ATVs. Like I'm talking drop a small block, you know, a 350 Chevy into your ATV or something crazy like that some interesting stuff, go out with people who've done that, um, put the, the request out on YouTube and see, um, see what's out there. Have people submit videos of their products or just send us a link to their, their ATV or side by side. They've done something crazy with, and then see if they're willing for us to come out and do some, uh, some taping, let us ride it. Hopefully it doesn't kill us or blow up. Um, but that's, that's an idea we're talking about doing for, uh, for next year. So, um, I think that would be fun. Hey, what's up, A. Macaulay? Does that Grizzly have a lift on it? No, you would think that it does, but with the uh, with the 27 inch tires, it looks like it has a lift on it. Here, I'll step out of the way so you guys can see a bit. But that's the uh, that's the stock ride height. I mean, there's there's some serious space in there. Hopefully, you can hear me there. I'll yell a little louder. Right now, we are on second from soft setting for the the suspension all the way around. Um, so it can even go up a little higher. Like if I lift on it, I shouldn't be lifting. I got a hernia right now, but um, if I lift up on it, it's still got maybe two more inches of ride height there. So it's got a little bit of ride in on it, which is pretty cool. So no, no lift on that thing at all. hundred percent stock. And like I said, I thought at first it was on full soft setting, but it's, uh, it's one click from full soft. So yeah, no lift, but it looks really nice. I, I don't know what you guys think, but I think it's the nicest looking grizzly and it's hard to see the paint color on it, but it's really, really pretty. Like, you know. It's a good looking ATV. You buy this thing or you go into the dealer showroom and you're going to be instantly drawn to it. I mean, you go over and you go, yeah, that's definitely a premium ATV. It looks really, really nice. So hope that answers your question. I know I always say too much. Sometimes it's not uh, not getting me to talk. It's getting me to shut up. Uh, will we ever see a modern two-stroke ATV UTV? I wish. I, I truly do. I wish BRP would come out with an ATV or a side-by-side -side with an E-Tech in it, honestly. I think there's people out there who would buy that. And that's another story I'd love to do something with. Um, I know that uh, company, uh, is it, it's not Speedworks. Um, maybe it is Speedworks built a, uh, um, oh, it was an art. It was when Articat still owned the company before Textron did. And they did a Wildcat trail. They pulled the motor out, uh, out of it and they put in, I believe an 800 uh, Suzuki at the time, Suzuki built. 800 two stroke because Suzuki built all the motors for um, for Articat uh, for a long time and I'm pretty sure they put an 800 in it and I was at Moab one time and heard the thing fire up and honestly it was like it was like prairie dogs in the field you're like whoa what was that you know like everybody just stopped and you know squirrel uh, it was it was amazing yeah super super cool so I would love to see that happen or even do it I think an ATV with a two stroke motor could be really cool there's a story behind that too about possibly a sport ATV that once started as a uh, two stroke um, in modern times and then switched to a four stroke. Anyways, that's something I probably shouldn't talk about. It's probably not information I should say anything on, but anyways, uh, yeah, it has 20, sorry, sorry guys. It has a uh, 27 inch uh, Maxxis Zillas on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty good size, uh, pretty good size rubber. I, I think it's probably about maybe, I don't know, lug heights, maybe like an inch and a quarter or a little bit less. Um, I've got a Kimpex tire over here. I'm going to roll one over for you just to show you what, what a comparable 27-inch um, from a different manufacturer. Uh, I think it's called the Mud. The Mud. Anyways, let me, let me grab the tire. I'll be right back. So 
this. <clears throat> this is a Kimpex. It's called a Mud Rider. Um, I don't know if you can see that there, but uh, let me tilt the screen for you. Oh, that's as far as the screen goes. So anyways, this is a similar 27 inch tire. A little bit, a little bit bigger though, actually. I think a lot bit bigger. Um, but it still says that it's a 27. Obviously, it doesn't have the weight of the vehicle on it, so it's not squished as much. But this has got about a 1.5 inch lug, whereas the Zilla has, I'd say maybe like a one inch. So, a bit of difference there. Those are uh, race line beadlock wheels. Those are going on our base uh, razor, um, base razor 900 build. We're doing that right now. You'll see that in the next little bit. So, anyways. What's the towing capacity of the Grizzly? I believe it's 1,300 pounds. Um, definitely increased, but I'm pretty certain it's 1,300 pounds. And I think you can put 308 pounds, 306 or 308 pounds on the racks total. So um, definitely increased, doing pretty good. Who offers the best manufacturer warranty? This is a funny one. CF Moto in Canada offers the best manufacturer warranty. It's five years. Um, I think it's like five years, 5,000 kilometers, and it is full powertrain for the five years. It's not bumper to bumper, I don't believe, for five years, but that's pretty cool. That tire's slick. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? It's not bad. And you know what? Those Kimpex tires over there, those ones, those ones, those ones, over by the dog, not that dog, that. Those ones are uh, are actually a pretty good pretty good price, too. They're, uh, they're a nice price. Do I like a double brake or a one lever? Great question. That's John. John, we like single lever brakes. I don't know. It's just something that, well, maybe Luke doesn't, but I'm pretty sure Luke's on board with me. I always like the Polaris single lever brake system. It's just, it's easy for me to work. Um, I'm never guessing which side is which. We're jumping from ATV to ATV to ATV. So a lot of times it's hard for us to really figure out, um, or not figure out, but just to remember, you know, which one's which. And and I don't, I don't ever really have a use to grab the rear brake. It's never been something that I've done. I mean, I don't lock up the rear brakes and like skid to a stop and put it sideways. Um, I'm not that person. <clears throat> so I like a nice modulated all round braking system, much like a car. I really enjoy to be able to just put the brakes on and know that I'm getting even proportional braking. Hope that answers that. Um, I think Can-Am has the best warranty. My brother got four years. He paid for that though. I'm guaranteed, I'm pretty certain he paid for that. So if you're talking stock warranty um, up here in Canada, CF Moto offers a five year stock warranty. Um, you can definitely upgrade from any of the manufacturers, just like your car, you know, you can always upgrade if you want, but um, yeah, I, I think that, uh, that CF Moto's got it up here in Canada for, uh, for the longevity. Uh, thoughts on the Grizzly 660? Grizzly 660 is a really good ATV. They made them for a long time. That motor's really strong. I mean, they had it in the Raptor. They had it in the, in the ATV. They had it in the Dino. Um, really good motor, and you can find tons of parts for them. So there's lots of opportunity there. Nothing wrong with it. It's a fun ATV. You'll have a blast on it. Um, it's actually pretty quick, too. So, yeah, I think, you, I think you'll like it. Uh, let me go through here. Sorry. Make a Honda Pioneer 1000 review. We did one a little while back and truthfully they haven't changed it. So, um, the one that we've done should still be current, uh, essentially. I mean, graphics are different, but that's about it. So, um, if you search on our page, there's a, there is a Pioneer, I think it's a 1005 test ride, but I mean, you're splitting hairs there if you want to do just the 1000 or the 1005 because it's exactly the same uh besides a little bit of wheelbase and that convertible rear i mean the extra weight really isn't going to kill the the performance of that thing much how come polaris reliability is so bad we don't have issues with polaris reliability obviously they had some problems with uh with temperatures on certain um certain side by sides but they fixed all of that uh we don't have issues with our polaris reliability they they work really good i mean we had a, a ranger here a polaris hvac ranger um, I think it was called the North Star with HVAC. And we beat on that thing for the past 24 months. And honestly, nothing went wrong with it. It was great. I mean, yeah, we ran the AC all summer long. We ran the heat all winter long. We plowed with it all winter long. Uh, it was our camera rig, beat on, take when somebody needed to do something, overload it when there wasn't enough room and we needed more space and great side by side. So we've, we've had really good luck with Polaris's. Uh, 1,000K on my Polaris 450 in four months, no problem. That's right, Mudpine. We've had good luck with ours, too. Ben, will you be bringing that Can-Am mud build to the Smoking Spurs this year? Oh, yeah. We are coming. And let me tell you, the mud build is getting a complete overhaul right now. It's at Turner Performance, which is just north of um, North Bay, Ontario. And uh, Steve Turner is doing some serious work to that thing right now. I, uh, I posted a picture of how much he's ground out on the, um, 
on the heads. He's doing um, a real good uh, porting job on that thing. But the motor may be changing just slightly because uh, he was looking for insanely big compression. He wants to make big power. And uh, so there's, there's quite a bit going on with that. And we're giving you guys a story just for YouTube. That's going to be probably a 15 minute story coming up pretty soon. That's strictly just for you guys. It's not on TV. It'll only be on YouTube and it's going to go through quite a bit of what we've been doing because we had some problems. Um, and it, it wasn't really uh, anyone's fault except mine that I should have checked uh, why our mud build wasn't working properly. Um, <clears throat> yeah. It, had it have been run and running strictly mud with not a lot of water, well, then it probably would have been fine. But um, we found a, a little bit of a flaw in the system on that on that vehicle, and and we fixed it. And uh, oh, oh, we fixed it. It's, <laughs> it's going to be good, and smoke and spurs is going to be fun. So yeah, we'll definitely be there. We'll be filming, hanging out. Uh, it's going to be a good time. Uh, sorry, let me get back here. Okay, um, I got probably about fifteen more minutes, then I got to run out, but. Uh, Razor Turbo accessories. Man, the Razor Turbo's got a lot of cool stuff, but number one, a roof. Number two, I like doors. Uh, not full doors, just the half door. I think it cleans up and looks tidy. Uh, number three, I like stereos. I, you, and an exhaust. I mean, MBRP, actually, we have um, we have MBRP's um, new, I think it's maybe called the Performance Series exhaust, uh, and it's on our Razor Turbo just out back, and it's it sounds really nice. Um, and cool thing is, go to MBRP, you can call those guys and talk to them. You want to know the real numbers, the real performance benefits, the real weight savings. They'll give you the actual numbers. No BS. They flow bench stuff. They test it all. They build it right there. They jig fit it. It bolts on. I know I sound like a talking, you know, like I'm trying to sell you on this stuff, but the truth is their products are really high quality and they bank on the fact that they are telling you the truth about, about their products. So if it makes one horsepower, they're not going to say it makes 10. It makes one. If it saves you five pounds in weight, they say it saves you five pounds in weight. But if it makes 10 horsepower, they're going to tell you it makes 10 and you can believe that stuff. And that's not, you got to put a fuel programmer on, you got to do this, you got to do that. It's just here, you put this thing on your, on your ATV or on your side by side, and this is the power that it's going to make. And this is the weight that it's going to save. And here's the materials it's made out of, which typically is a nice raw polished, uh, uh, 304 stainless, I think. Um, but I know that all their stuff is stainless because they, uh, they know that you can polish it back up. doesn't have coatings on it to burn or peel. I know. I sound like I'm trying to sell you on them, but it's just the fact that their stuff is built to a higher level. It is really high quality. It's priced really well. And it's built like an hour and 15 minutes north of me. Um, so, yeah, those guys are really cool. And the owner of the company, Martin, is just an absolute power sports, uh, cool car, cool trucks nut. I mean, the guy's, got, the guy's got hardware that is impressive. And so it's cool to see people who aren't just in it for the – just for the money, you know, they're, they're genuine enthusiasts. And so we, uh, yeah, I, I got love for that company. They're good people and uh, they know how to do it. So anyway, sorry, I go off on tangents here. Um, let me see. I had an old big bear and an old Kodiak, but my new 450 was good. <laughs> how is your luck with the new Yamahas? We've had nothing but luck with the Yamahas. Honestly, Yamaha is, I mean, people talk about Honda's reliability, but I would stack Yamaha against Honda any day of the week. They're equally as reliable. I mean, but they've got better performance. So, you know, this thing will blow the doors off a 680 ring con like it was standing still. In fact, it'd probably peel the paint right off of it. Um, this is a great, great ATV and they're using a CVT. I like CVTs. I know gear on gear transmissions are great for longevity and, and all that, but I, I don't know too many people who've blown a belt on a Yamaha unless they've smoked it and not put it in low range. And that is not the belt's fault. That's the operator's fault. So I'm, I'm a fan of, uh, of Yamaha. Uh, will we be at Brimstone for the end of August event? No, we are not at Brimstone this year, but uh, call them and tell them that you want us to come and uh, maybe we can make something happen. Uh, any review coming for the new Yamaha Wolverine X2? They are out testing it today as well. So the X2 and the um, uh, <laughs> the Razor RS1 are out on the trail today. Um, so yeah, we're definitely going to have a test of the X2 coming for sure. What's a good belt to get for my KFX 700? I broke three in the last two years. Not the one you've been using. <laughs> Sorry, not to be a jerk, Shane, but um, <clears throat> you can look at the the Deco XTXs seem to be pretty good, but you're probably going to tell me that that's what you've been using. So um, in that case, maybe not that one, but uh, we found good luck with the Deco XTXs. They do have a warranty on them too. So if you blow the belt, you said three in the last two years. So I think that they might have like a one-year warranty on them or something like that. Um, look into that. I can't be completely sure, but I know Deco XTXs are supposed to be really strong. So uh, I would give them a try. 
Are you going to do a WR700 on the Grizzly again? Yeah, you know what? If we do a build on one with like an 18 or an 815 uh, overbore, I would definitely go kind of in that direction with it. So real, real sporty. Um, sport, you, I don't want to call it sport utility because I wouldn't use it for utility, but you know what I mean? Like kind of scrambler and um, uh, renegade style, like that that style of a of an ATV with an 815. And I think at 815, um, if it was turboed, it would definitely have uh, the legs to stand to compete with those guys. Even if it wasn't though, and we had, I don't know, a little nitrous bottle on there or something. I think we could have some fun with that. And I'd like to see what an 815 big bore single would do. How much horsepower does the Grizzly make? Great question. I can't answer that because I didn't look it up today. So I, I apologize. I'm not sure what it makes. Um, somebody might be able to, to chime in. This also is the 686. It's not the 708. So the 708 was the previous generation. This is the 686. Um, so they have changed the, uh, the motor in this. Um, and this one is more reliable, better mid-range. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just a, a better motor uh, that's going to be around longer. Bryce, I love the vids. Keep it up. Thank you. We will. We'll keep doing that. And thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Dirt Commander or Whole Shot ATV tires? I do like the Dirt Commander. I think the Dirt Commander is a great tire. So I would go Dirt Commander um, for sure if those were my two, two choices. I like the Dirt Commander a lot. How is the Sportsman 570? Any cons? Um, no, I mean, you know, you get on it. If you're used to like an 800 or something, you're not going to feel the same power. But if you're coming off of a 450 or something like that, you're going to love it. I think the 570 Polaris motor is a really, really strong motor. I don't know too many people who, uh, or sorry, engine. I got in trouble last week for calling it motor because somebody said that it's just an electric thing that's a motor. But I don't know. Yamaha Motor Corps. They make a lot of gas-powered engines. Uh, anyways. Um, I, I really like the 570. Strong motor. Works good. Banshee versus 250R. <laughs> you know what? That would make my day too because those are both really fun ATVs. When is Honda going to go CVT? Um, I don't know. When's the moon going to be made out of barbecue spare ribs? That's a tough question. Uh, we would love to see one. We would love to see a Honda with a CVT. I think that would be a big step forwards, but they're all gear on gear. So, well, sorry, except for the Rincon with that, um, that like, what is it? Hydrostatic transmission. Um, I think a CVT would be way more beneficial than a hydrostatic though, because that thing's expensive to fix. Um, and it's pretty much like a full tranny swap. So we'd love to see Honda go CVT. Just got here. What did I miss about the Grizzly? Oh, but you can watch it at the end. We've been talking about it quite a bit. Uh, I love the power of the Yamaha and the way they ride. I have a new Honda now and miss my Yamaha. But shame I had problems. Oh, sorry to hear that. Yeah, you might have had, you know, just the wrong one. But uh, we haven't had too many issues. Honda, no future CVT. Fortunately, reliability rules Honda. <laughs> Gaston, you are not you are not wrong. They are reliable. It's just not that there is there's not as much fun as the rest. I mean, I think that Honda could have such a huge such a huge market share if they just brought. I mean, they do have big market share, but you know what I mean. They could they could be progressing forwards if uh, if they built some stuff with CVTs and they just stepped away from that the current focus that they have. I mean, look at their look at their sport bikes for uh, uh, on road motorcycle. I mean, they make some really kick our sport bikes. They make some really nice uh, dirt bikes. Um, yeah, they could they could do that. They could build a really really great super high performance ATV side by side. And I hope they do. I honestly, I hope nothing but good things for them. It's just the current product that I would like to see them step up. What side by side should I buy? Razor or General? Depends on what you do. If you need a tilting rear box and you want to do some yard work or you want to, you know, have that space for whatever it might be, um, then you can't go Razor because it doesn't happen, right? The good thing is the General has the Razor chassis. So you're getting the same ride and performance as you would with the Razor, but you're getting more functionality. Um, I do understand that obviously our general uh, has a bit stepped up price range. So that's something to look into as well. So I would say your price point and your use, your use of the vehicle would definitely determine that. Uh, I have a 2015 Sportsman 570. And I took it to Wyoming this summer. The only con I can think of is that you need to bring more gas on day trips. Fair enough. Yeah. And you can, you know, you're definitely, if you're running with other guys and you got big open fire roads or big open spaces, you're going to be, you're going to be using a lot of fuel because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what the CC displacement is. If you're holding a thing wide open, you're using a lot of fuel. That's just the way it goes. So if you're squeezing a 570 to try to keep up with other people, or you're trying to keep good ground speed, then you're definitely going to burn some fuel on that thing. So there, that could be a con, I guess. But at the same time, I mean, yeah, strap on a, a you know, one of those cool little uh, 
can't remember what brand they are, but those cool little gas tanks that have the little center lock in it and put it on the rack and you're good to go, right? Um, I know it isn't winter, but what's your thoughts on the 850 Skidoo? Oh, the motor's a beast. It's nice that they're putting it in just about everything now too. So we really like the 850 Skidoo. We like the 850 Polaris too though. So there's gonna be some shootouts with those two for sure this winter. So uh, check that out on snow tracks, definitely. Um, no problem, Isaiah. Jordan, oh, it skipped down to the bottom. Sorry, guys, got to keep looking. Uh, Polaris 450 is a 500 cc. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's like 498 cc's or something like that, right? So, yeah, definitely. Uh, Renegade 570 or Sportsman 570. What should I buy next? And can we get another shootout? Uh, we would love to do that, and we'll try our best to get that uh, to get that happening. Renegade 570, a little bit sportier. Um, you're going to lose that front rack, so. That's one thing. Sportsman 570, you're going to get the front rack. Um, but the truth is, the Renegade's built off the Outlander chassis with some new tabs for the bodywork. Um, unless you go with like the Renegade uh, XXC, which you're not talking about because you're talking 570, um, the suspension and all that stuff, I mean, it's very, very similar. So I think it depends on your usage. If you're using it for more hunting or you're going to, you know, just be out trail riding at lower speeds and you like the front rack, you maybe put something on there, I don't know, a chainsaw or whatever, uh, then I would say the Sportsman's probably going to be more the right one. If you're looking for a bit more high speed, a little more fun, um, you want something that you can see the wheels a little bit better so you can put better wheel placement on rocks and whatnot, then I'd say probably the uh, the Renegade. Uh, what's better, thinking about getting a Yamaha 125 versus Honda 125? You know what? Uh, like I said before, I'm a fan of the Yamaha. I think it's a great, if you're talking about the little the little 125, like the Sport ATV, um, then the Yamaha is actually a great little, great little ATV. Really, really fun. Super fun. If you're talking about dirt bikes, I don't know. I'm still a fan of Yamaha all around. Yamaha is a motor company. They build great motors. So, um, and the rest of the dirt bike stuff is very, very similar. I mean, dirt bike suspension wise and components are very similar. It tends to be the motor that really changes people's mind nowadays. Uh, what was the premium dirt tracks from the beginning of the season? Oh, are you talking about the, um, yeah, okay. So the premium subscription service from the start of the season, uh, YouTube didn't quite have it figured out how to make that work. So what it was is that we were gonna do a whole bunch of extra stuff just for YouTube. Um, but to do that, we have to put extra people on board for just making content strictly for YouTube. It may still come out in the future. We're not gonna cut back anything. All the stuff that goes on TV will always be on YouTube for you guys. And you can always watch that free. None of, you know, we're not gonna make, thank you, Tyler Rotopax. Um, we're not going to make you guys pay for any of that stuff ever. Uh, it was just that they offered a service where if you want to subscribe, you want to get more access to us, more live streams, more personal chat time where we can talk about things and, and be specific. Um, YouTube was trying to make a new platform for that. It hasn't come up yet. It hasn't really worked right. We tried it. It didn't work. So we're not going to do that right now. Um, but anyways, it's just something for in the future. It was like, I don't know, three bucks a month or something like that. And we would be able to upload special content and specific things just for you guys. So um, are we going to build a Honda? No, not right now. How strong is the 570 plastic racks? Are they easily breakable? They're not. They're steel frame underneath. So um, there is steel reinforcement underneath it, and they work really good. Um, sorry, let me see here. Start the Grizz. Yeah, sure. I wish I could show you the gauge package on it. Sorry, we just scared my dog. <laughs> I wish I could show you the gauge package on it because it's really, really nice. It's much different than before. It's really like a, a much cleaner looking um, LCD uh, and it's it's backlit really nice, like much, much nicer than any other LCD I've seen. So it's pretty sweet. Um, now it smells like exhaust in here. I like that. When I was plowing snow, my Honda blew a transmission and I had to push it home with a, with a 250. <laughs> Yeah, that probably wasn't fun. Um, did you guys ever do a timber sled review? Yeah, we got a bunch of them on uh, on Snow Tracks. So just go to um, uh, Snow Tracks' YouTube page, and there's a whole bunch of uh, actually snow snow bike stuff there. So we've done timber sled uh, a couple of times now, and we have um, uh, we have a story where we rode Yetis and talk about the Yetis. That's uh, the Revelstoke trip from maybe 2016, I think 2016. Yeah, so check those out, and you'll get some of that fun stuff. Um, all right, let me see what we can do here. 
What's my favorite mud quad? You know what? I'm not sure. I like I like any of the specific built ones. You know, they they really do work good. So a head to head shootout is really what we need to do, and we'll try to get all that stuff together. Is it a different exhaust? I don't think so. I think it's the I think it's the same. It's got a nice two inch hitch receiver on the back, which is something that I think all ATVs should have is a dedicated two inch on the back. Um, just watch a Can-Am Mud Race video. Right on. Thanks, man. DJ Master Beast. I appreciate that. That's been a good video. We enjoy that one. Do a shop tour. There's not much to do here right now. Our shop for filming is actually uh, smaller than you would expect. I, what I want to do is try to try to do like a walk around of the area so you guys can see where we are. Like literally, uh, I don't know, less than 100 yards that way is, is a lake. Um, and uh, yeah, our test track across the road is pretty close. We're in cottage country, so during the summer times, we sometimes have to stay a little bit more quiet. But uh, my parents live right next to the office here where we do all of our filming and all the all this stuff out of. Um, but I will try to do a shop tour sometime, for sure. Um, any problems with the 708 motor for Yamaha? We haven't had any problems with it. Um, but I think that they are able to get better reliability and better performance out of the 686. So that's why they went back, I imagine. Uh, do a Yamaha build and race it against the Can-Am mud build. <laughs> I'm going to be honest, the Can-Am mud build is going to be hard to beat, I think, after it comes back from Turner Performance because those guys are they're, they're going to be doing some insane stuff. Um, I don't know if we could... Oh, I am over an hour. So I have custody on the Grizzly, 1,300 pounds. Uh, pretty impressive. Can I recommend a side-by-side -side for a family of five? <clears throat> Absolutely. So it, I guess it depends on where you, how you want to spend that money. You, a family of five is going to need a two-row uh, side-by-side. I'm not opposed at all to riding vehicles like the Paris Channel or the can -Am. Oh, Sorry, it kicked me off for a sec. I'm not opposed to riding a utility vehicle in the trail because they're a lot of fun. The, um, the Defender six-seater and the Ranger uh, crew are both great by sides that are a lot of fun on the trail. They do a lot of work around the house. If you're a family of five, you probably want to buy it for just more than strictly trail riding. You got some stuff to do around the house. Maybe you can use it for business purposes. Who knows what? But it's got a rim so you can put coolers, you can go camping with it, put all your tents and gear stuff in the box in the back. Because if you go to a sport eat or a sport side by side, you got no room for stuff. I mean, it's very limited. So I can go out and rail a uh, general crew or a, um, ask us to hang out or talk or whatever. If we're having dinner somewhere, um, oh, sorry, I just got booted. <laughs> I'll wait for it to come back. If, if we're out having dinner somewhere or something like that and we're at an event, come say hi, come stop and talk. Um, don't be shy because uh, we're happy to chat and uh, we're just like we are here. You know, I'm, uh, we, we like talking shop. We like talking with people. We like hanging out. And if we're riding, uh, even if you see us trail side, come over and say hi. We love to love to talk with people. So anyways, uh, what state are we in? I said that I wasn't going to answer anymore. We're in Ontario, Canada, uh, but we do most of our stuff in the United States. Uh, most of our riding's done right here in Ontario where we are but we travel to the U S quite a bit. So anyways, thank you everybody. Thank you, Michael, uh, for chatting as well. Appreciate it. I really like, um, hanging out with all you people. Uh, this is fun. Um, yeah, I, I tell myself I'm going to come on for 20 minutes and I always stay for an hour. So, um, thank you very much for in and watching our stuff. We really appreciate it. Thank you for watching our show. If you're watching on uh, OLN or wild TV in Canada or the outdoor channel in the USA, Thank you for tuning in and watching. And for everybody who's here on YouTube, we really appreciate all of your views, um, all the love that you send us and uh, all that stuff. So listen, um, thank you so much. We get to do what we do because you watch. So uh, God bless and uh, have a great day. Get out, ride, enjoy yourself and uh, stay safe.